guys, it's Kelly here, and I am thrilled to announce that I am joining the um, Whimsy Stamps Design Team. And this is release week, so this is Millie. She is part of the Little Spring Helper Collection um, by Elizabeth Bell. She is completely adorable. I'm so excited to be um, working with such cute little images. So I'm using my Misty to stamp my stamp. However, um, it is a red rubber stamp and it already has the foam included so if you're using your Misty you need to take the foam insert out so that you can stamp it down and it's even. And then um, I'm also working on Nina um, Solar White cardstock. This is kind of new to me. This is only the second image I've ever colored on it. Normally I'm using um, Georgia Pacific from Walmart. I'm not lying. That's really what I use. Uh, so here I'm just starting off with her skin tone. That's usually where I start first. That's just, I guess, what I've got in the habit of. There's no right or wrong way to start your image, whatever works for you. And I start with my lightest tones and I lay down my shadows and then I work out to my darkest color. I use what they call the flicking technique. And that's where you just use the tip of your marker, very light pressure to uh, flick in color gives you a nice blend and I know um, looking at it because everything else is stark white in contrast her skin tone is going to look really really dark don't be afraid um, it'll lighten up as we add more colors to her so the way that I'm shading her is basically um, just to me what the image looks like it should be um, the sides of her face would be darker and especially the side that's turned away from the front of the card would be darker. Uh, her arm is up so she would have a shadow cast in her um, elbow and then where her jeans sit would be darker. So once I get out to my darkest color I go back in to my lightest color and I branch out my shading a little bit more uh, than I did the first go round and this is just because I have a tendency to get a bit dark when I start um, with my darkest colors and then I'm going to go over the whole thing with my lightest which is E50. I'm going to um, add in some blush which ironically R20's name is actually blush that's just my preferred color for adding some color to her cheeks and then I'm using the R32 to color in her lips. I'll blend that back out with my E50 and then I'll go ahead and move on to her hair and again, this is how I normally operate. I normally do skin tone first and then their hair. I wanted her to be kind of a darker blonde color. And you'll see me turning my paper a lot. And the reason that this is is because you want to flick your color um, in the shape that's laid down for you. So whichever direction the lines are going, you want to follow them. Because it's not going to look natural if your shading doesn't go with what's already there. So this one because her hair is in a ponytail but her bangs kind of hang down can be a little tricky to get the shading right I know that um, when I first started coloring I kind of struggled with those types of images uh, what I learned was for me the best way to get a good blend was to do a little bit of flicking but then it's almost just like a little line of color like where her bangs would hang over her ponytail and then I also have a tendency to add a bit more shading towards the uh, back of the head because that would have less light and be a bit darker. So my darkest color, I'm just adding very little bits of it. This E57, because like I said, I wanted her to be a dirty blonde. I didn't necessarily want her to be a brunette. So her ponytail would have that shading and then also her part um, would be the darkest and her ponytail in the background, I added a bit more dark too because it's, like I said, it's further away. So darker objects naturally fall to the back and give you a little bit of dimension. And then um, I'm going to do the same thing that I did with her skin tone from the dark, lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest. And then I'm going to try to leave a band of almost um, white where her ponytail is because the light would naturally shine on that so it'll be a little bit darker more toward the um like the base of the ponytail but then that on top it would have a band from here i'm going to move on to her jeans um oh the bird is the same color i just did this in b95 and b97 it's really tiny so not a lot of shading is necessary i probably could have even gotten away with one color 
but for her jeans i'm you'll see that there isn't necessarily any dimension in it i'm kind of drawing that in um i'm not gonna lie to you i colored this image three different times the first time i messed up her jeans the second time i tried to over stamp the black outline so i didn't have to outline it i completely messed it up if you follow me on instagram you saw that and so this is the third time third time's a charm right um so with her, the shading of her jeans, because your jeans, uh, like when they're longer, they gather at the bottom, and that's the shading that I'm adding, is where they would be gathered, where they would bend uh, behind her knee, and then where her kneecap would stick out. Now on her, if you're looking at it, the right-hand side with the patch on it, the reason I'm not putting any shading there is because her patch is going to be a different color, so um, there isn't any need to shade it right now. So once I get the base shading down, um, I'm going to start building up those shadows with my darker colors. Uh, this is something that I'm still learning, still practicing. Um, so the B95, even though it's a natural blending group, the B95 and the B97 don't blend all that hot, in my humble opinion. So what I did was I scribbled some of the 97 on my Ranger Craft Mat, and then I'm picking it up with my 95 to get like a mid-tone. It's the same idea as the uh, tip to tip blending but it's just easier for me to scribble it on my craft mat and pick it up than it would be for me to continuously touch the tip of the other marker. So after that and I'm, you see I'm leaving some white parts and the reason I'm leaving the white parts is because I'm going to cover them all with my lightest color. Uh, you saw me um, in between the tip to tip technique and coloring it with my lightest color. I did scribble off my marker and that was just to get any excess off. And then here I'm just going back in and um, seeing what else needs to be blended or what could be blended better. It's all, you know, a learning process, especially when you're coloring images you never colored before. I decided I wanted her top to be purple. I knew there was going to be a lot of green in here, and I thought um, purple would be a nice complementary color. You could also have done pink or red. Those all go great with um, green. It's a very uh, complementary palette. So here for her um, pleats and her little top, which I have, I have to tell you is just so adorable. I would totally wear that top in real life. Um, I am sticking to the shading to basically where the lines are already drawn and anything that's going to be underneath is going to be darker. Here on this part there isn't a pleat there but it looks like there should be so I just went ahead and drew it in and I'm just um I took the tutorial from um Zoe by Make It Crafty. She has a wonderful tutorial on uh, how to color creases and I would highly recommend that. I learned uh, a lot with that and I'm like I said still learning, still practicing. So from here I am doing the same thing I did before, um, lightest to darkest, and I'm being I guess very careful as to where I'm putting my darker shading. I'm only really putting in lines and it's because I don't want to get too heavy-handed with that dark when you notice when I pick my marker colors I went from V04 to V09. The V's are kind of tricky like there isn't a good blend I guess if you want a brighter purple and this is just the one that I found that works best for me um, and I don't seem to have any issue getting the two to blend. If you do you could again do the um, tip to tip tip to tip technique I'll say that three times fast and um, maybe you would get better blending. I don't really feel like it's an issue. So I'm just um, putting down that VO4 and this time I am stretching it out a little farther into those pleats where it would naturally be a little bit darker. And then um, the V12 will, or I'm sorry, the V01 will be next. And that one I'm almost completely covering um, the image. I'm just leaving the parts that will be the highlights white. And then I'll cover that with the V, is it zero, zero, zero? I think I used the one with three zeros. <laughs> That's what I think I used. Yes, it is. Okay, good. So then that I'll just cover the whole top with, and that then that lightest color will be my highlight. I feel like that gives fairly good dimension. I decided I wanted to keep a fairly limited color palette, so I'm going to go ahead and make the flowers in her um, pot purple as well. 
they're so tiny there would be no point in even trying to blend them so I just picked the VO4 because I felt like that was the best match and I colored them completely with that. I'm going to make her little ruffle underneath her skirt white and this is the only time I'm breaking that light to dark dark to light rule and it's because it's so tiny if you put a bunch of ink over it it's just going to bleed. So I started with the C5 and put that in my darkest parts and then the C3 and then I'll end it with the C1 and I'm not going to go back over it because when you're coloring white you're only adding in the shadows. So you want to still have some stark white in there. I'm going to make her little belt white as well. Again trying to keep that limited color palette so it doesn't get confusing when you look at the photo photo look at the stamp <laughs> and then her um, gardening gloves I'm gonna make white as well and this is where I you know where I'm picking my shadows is just what makes sense to me she's holding the pot so there would be some shadows where her fingers are where her thumb um, separates would be a little bit darker and I'm just adding the very tiniest little bit of C5 because I don't want it to be gray I want it to appear white and again white is one of those things that it will look really dark until you get lots of other colors around it and then you'll see how much brighter it actually looks. So once I blend those out then I'm gonna go and do the pot and I wanted it to be kind of a terracotta so I picked some E's that had some red tones and then originally I was going to shade it so that there was shading on both sides so that's what I'm doing here and then I changed my mind and decided I was just going to have it darker where it was closest to her and lighter on that outside edge. There would be a bit of a shadow cast by those leaves and then also by her hand where she's holding it. So I made sure to add that in. And then just, um, you know, that little bit of the, the darkest color. This one was only a three color blend. I felt like it was all that I needed uh, for that pot for it to make sense and have a good blend. Um, and then I colored it again of the entire thing like I usually do with my lightest color which was E33. Now we're going to get into the greens. This is my favorite green combination. I'm a yellow green person. I like super bright greens. I'm coloring her eyes to match. I'm hitting it with my lightest color and then just adding a bit of dark. And then I'm going to take the lightest one and color everything. All of the uh, greenery in her pot with this uh, YG01. And even the little spiralies that are coming off the edge. And this is just my base layer. And then I'm going to go in and start doing just little flicks of color on the leaves that are more defined. And then also in that greenery. Because I don't want it to look flat. I want it to look like there is some dimension. So I'm adding that um, a little bit of the darker colors. Just flicking them in under the flowers. Or adding just little sprigs here and there. To kind of break up that large area. Uh, where it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of detail and then just again tiniest little bit of the darkest color your two if you watch my video you've heard me say this before your the two colors you should see the most of are your midtones not the most of your lightest and not the most of your darkest those midtones should be what really um, shine through and then I'm just going to go back through and blend them all out I skipped the Y17 or YG17 when I was blending them out because I just didn't feel like it was necessary to have to put them back in. And then I'm going to add in some grass under her feet. I'm not creating a scene per se. I'm just kind of giving the illusion of um, some ground and then later some sky. So I'm doing, I know it looks fast because I'm speeding it up, but it really is fast in real life as well. I'm just doing little short little flicks of color that are going to be um, the uh, blades of grass. And this is, again, you know, just to give her something to stand on. We don't want her floating in midair. That would look strange. <laughs> um, so once the I get the grass down, then I just go through. Um, and even though like you're going over darker colors with lighter colors because Copics are transparent it picks up some color so it still gives you variation uh, it might seem like it's pointless to go over a darker color with a lighter color but it's not not with Copics not the way that they work so here I'm just going to do some illusion of some sky and um, I picked two very light blue colors I'm not even putting it all the way around her the darkest color I'm just kind of putting it um, you know here and there so it's super blue behind her and then I'm going to blend that all out with a B um, 
is it quadruple i think it's a quadruple zero and again once it looks uh, much darker when it's wet but once it dries it really is very light and it just kind of blends into the background and gives the illusion of her you know walking in the grass with her little flower pot and i don't have to waste a lot of copic ink coloring in the whole background it's just not necessary I'm using my white gel pen to add some polka dots to her patch i'm also adding some white to her eyes and to her belt and then i wanted to do just a little more detailing when you do uh, one layer card which i often do one layer panels um, the details is where it's at so i decided to give her some white stitching on her jeans which i thought would be super cute and then these are souffle pens they're also known as embossing pens I'm going to get them started on just some scrap paper over to the side, but they are opaque after they dry, and they're kind of raised up a little, so I'm using the yellow to put in the center of the flowers, and then I'm going to use the purple to make her gloves polka dotted, because I thought that that would be really cute. Oftentimes, gardening gloves have a little bit of pattern to them, and I thought that this was the easiest way to achieve that versus trying to do it with a Copic marker and risking it bleeding into the white. So I always outline all of my images. This is a EK Success journaling pen, and it's a 0.25 uh, nib. These lines are very um, fair. They're very delicate, so I didn't pick a very large nib. I wanted something that matched. So I outlined the whole image. I didn't show you that because it's rather boring, and oftentimes I have to get my face pretty close to the image to make sure everything lines up. This is a new stamp set from Hero Arts, which um, is called You're So Lovely. It'll be released on February 8th. I was just blessed enough to get it a little bit early. And I thought this sentiment that says, have a beautiful day, was perfect for this image. So I just inked that up with some black um, W plus 9 pure color ink, and I'm going to stamp that down right on top of her. It's difficult to see the beautiful, but we're going to make it a little easier by outlining it with a white gel pen. I didn't outline the whole thing. I just outlined the parts that laid over her so it would pop out a little bit more. And then I'm going to add some clear Wink of Stella to her top and to the flowers just to add some shimmer because I am a firm believer that everything should have shimmer. All the cards. All the cards in the world should have shimmer. And um, so that is going to be it for the coloring portion. I decided I was going to mount it on some purple cardstock. This is Gummy Bear by Basil, uh, their card shop um, brand. And I matted it with the card a little more to the left, so there's more purple on the right. And that's just because I wanted to offset the fact that the large portion of my image is the majority is to the left of my card. So once I have that down, and I'm using um, Tombow Mana Multi Glue, that's just my preferred glue for pretty much everything. Um, I, I love that it's repositionable, and I love that it stays wet long enough uh, to be moved around a little bit. So I just mounted that on a white card base, and then that is pretty much the card. So I will be back uh, tomorrow with another video featuring um, another new release from the Whimsy Stamps set, and I hope you guys will join me then. I hope you have a wonderful day. I will talk to you later. Bye.